Hey guys, it's JT Tran, and today I have a really cool pair of guests, a real life AMBW couple. Because here at the ABCs of Attraction, I encourage all my clients to explore relationships with all types of women. So here with me is Renee and Z. Say hello, guys. Yo. What's hello. What's going on, people? They actually have their own YouTube channel called Blazing Quest, right? Correct. Yes. And you guys represent a very rare kind of couple in the community. Like, how'd you guys meet? We actually met back in high school, and we had mutual classes together, but we didn't actually become friends until our junior year, and we'd, like, occasionally hang out. So you weren't high school sweethearts? Yeah, nothing like no. that. Oh, okay. So we went to our own separate colleges, and we remained in touch, but, you know, we were doing our own thing, and then... After we graduated college is when we kind of met back up. We started hanging out, hanging out like every day. <laughs> and then it was kind of like, oh, we're dating. <laughs> so, <laughs> sort of automatic. Yeah, it was dating. like a random no, thing, you know. It, it was definitely not an automatic thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, what is it like from the guy's perspective? From his perspective. Yeah, um, like, it took some effort. I would say we were enemies in high school, like frenemies. Oh, <laughs> it really? was one of those like secret friendships where it was, oh, we all had our own social circles mm -hmm. and no one really knew that we were friends and whatnot but we did hang out outside of school okay but after college when we met up again that's when I like fell for her uh, and she was at Florida International University in Miami mm -hmm. we were like doing like the whole like club party scene down there and I was like wow this is like the coolest girl ever she has like such a huge like social <laughs> circle yeah. she knows how to talk to people the kicker was she had no idea like I had feelings for her like at <laughs> all, like, for, like the whole yeah. like <gasps> Three months, I think it got to the point where um, we were hanging out and like any millennial relationship, we were already like sleeping together and all that, but it wasn't like a real relationship. <laughs> you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so basically what happened was I was flying out to LA and I was like, yo, like I'm in love with you. Just dropped <laughs> oh, it on her. Just true, dropped true. it on her. And I was like, yo, this is like take it or leave it, you know? Like I'm like, yo, come move with me. Like let's do this. And, um, <laughs> wow. And she's always been the one to, I don't know, sidestepping the issue, like yeah. <laughs> trying to talk around it. And I was like, no, I You're need to know. You're the sly one. Yeah. I was like, no, I need to know now, right now. <laughs> But right. <laughs> obviously she said yes, and that's great. And that's here great. we are. <laughs> the thing is, I, I wanted to have you guys on because, like I said, and you guys, I'm sure, are totally familiar. A and B W couples are pretty rare, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, did you guys like ha encounter any kind of like resistance from your friends? Because I've, I've heard that, like, when I tell my students that they should approach everyone, whether they're white or you know, Latina or black, and they'll be like, black girls, like, I don't think black girls like Asian guys. Mm -hmm. Did you encounter any kind of racism or prejudice, you know, when you guys started dating? Yeah, definitely. I mean, when we were in Miami, I didn't really notice it because mm -hmm. there's so many, you know, it's like a huge melting pot, and I guess we were just doing our own thing that I didn't really notice it, but definitely out here in LA, we get looks, people stare at us, you know, yes. we get judgment, people would make comments, and it's just like, that was so new to me to experience something like that. And I've previously dated a white person. Like, we never, you know, no one ever judged us or said anything. It was like so you normal. You get more <laughs> flack because he's Asian. Yeah. And especially, oh. um, I notice it more when I see, like, when black people look at us or when Asians look at us, they definitely are the more judgmental wow. of, of everyone, you know, because they're like, what is, you know, it's either what is she doing with him or what is he doing with her? So. It's definitely something to get used to and then especially like I don't think my friends were like oh why are you dating an Asian person you know it wasn't judgmental like that but definitely from like his family's perspective you know it was like something I had to get used to like the pressure of being in a relationship with him they're kind of you know it's yeah. you know it's from generations past <laughs> it's not normal to date a black girl you know right, so right. and unfortunately <laughs> I think we all know Asian parents are kind of racist yeah and yeah. that was definitely something new to me that I've never you know had to experience before I mean Sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, I was just saying, like, I'd say, like, probably one of the biggest discrimination, like, places is, like, if we go to dim sum or, like, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. in, like, an Asian restaurant, any, like, Asian environment is definitely, even we were at, like, LACMA the other day where there's uh, the lampposts. Right, mm -hmm. right. And there's, like, a lot of, that's a heavy, like, Korean area on Wilshire. And like all the Korean ladies, old Korean ladies would like <laughs> stare her down. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's always like it's always her. Like yeah. they always look at her and they're like, "Why are you stealing our men?" Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. <laughs> and it's like it's so it's so funny because 
I don't understand this, um, this like inherent like racism, like they're not able to accept it. It's mm -hmm. like, because in, I feel like in mainland China right now, if you, if you look at it, like a lot of people in China are doing business in Africa. Mm -hmm. There's like a huge like growth where they, you know, they're in Nigeria, they're starting businesses and stuff. And it's, I'm sh sure there's Asian couples. No, like, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was reading because, you know, like with China's one child policy and female infanticide, there's literally 30 million missing Chinese women. And that's just in China. We're not even counting like Vietnam or Korea or India or Japan. And I read an article where a lot of Chinese that are going over to Africa to do business are getting married because there's not enough women to go yeah. around yeah. <laughs> or like the Chinese women. Uh, there's another article I read that Chinese women expect their boyfriend to make twice as much as a national average. <laughs> like there's so few they can command this premium. So, mm -hmm. you know, this is why I encourage my guys to, to date everybody, to be open to that and not just be like, oh, I'm only going to date Asian girls right. or I'm only going to date white girls. You should be open to dating everybody because you know, the girls are open to dating everybody. Yo, so, pussy's pussy. <laughs> <laughs> Sidebar. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I'm so sorry that you guys face this discrimination because I myself have dated like two African American women, or specifically Ethiopian. But I always feel like because I'm five foot five, and like, how tall are you? Six foot. Yeah, I, I wish I was as tall as you, right? <laughs> but I get looks, and I'm pretty sure maybe it's a, a race factor, but. A lot of times, it's the height difference. Yeah. <laughs> I go after like tall girls, like religiously. So <laughs> I know when I get stared at, it's like it might be race, but it's probably because I look like a dwarf compared yeah. to like, the girls I date. Do you yeah. usually go, um, like, what is your, how do you approach black women? Well, the thing is, what I find when it comes to approaching black women is I want to be direct, mm -hmm. right? Because they don't expect it. Right. And, uh, you know, a lot of times, uh, most girls, but especially black girls, have never been approached by an Asian guy. So when I go up to a black girl and say, hey, I think you're beautiful. I'd like to get to know you better. It blows them away because here I'm, I'm not pussyfooting around. I'm mm -hmm. not trying to be all jokey. I'm not trying to be that, that funny Asian guy. <laughs> I'm not trying to be their best friend. I am, mm -hmm. like, putting myself out there. I, I get a look. Like, I feel like a certain respect because of that, because I am being direct, I am being sexual, I am being confident. And there have been times when I've done that, and it's like a, a group of uh, black people, like the black guy come up to me later, is like, dude, <laughs> nice. <that was> sex. <laughs> ah. <laughs> no, it's, yeah. it's cool. Um, the thing is, like, you guys gotta approach everybody. Like, no one's gonna, yeah, you might face discrimination, mm -hmm. but it's important to get out there because the future love of your life could right. be any anywhere. Color. Guys, what words of advice or wisdom do you have for any, let's say, a, a young, you know, Asian and black couple that are just starting out, or maybe there's an Asian guy or a black woman out there that's looking for love? What do you guys have for them? Well, I'll let Renee go first on that, <laughs> give the female point of view. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I think the best thing is just to go after, you know, if there's someone you're interested in, don't listen to your friends, don't listen to your parents, don't listen, you know, it's up to you. You're the one who's going to meet someone that you love, you know, you don't want to kind of push that away just because of these stereotypes. Put that out the window. You don't, you know, people think like, oh, Asian guys are nerdy or they're shy or they wouldn't like a ratchet black girl or whatever. We're loud, you know, like mm -hmm. all these stereotypes. And it's just like people are people. You don't know until you approach that person, you right. know, what kind of personality they're going to have. So it's just like I feel like, you know, just go for it. And I know that sounds like generic or whatever, but... It's just something you have to do, you know, if that's what you want, just go for it and don't worry about if, you know, because I mean, we're still dealing with discrimination and mm -hmm. judgment and, you know, right. but I'm still happy. I'm still in love. I'm still, you know, I'm not going to cry about it because people are looking at me the wrong way or, you know, like, right. it's just something that, you know, it's 2016, like it's still new, but it's definitely, you know, the future generation of like, you know, interracial couples are a thing. It's happening. You Can't know, stop it. get with it. You stop know? it. <laughs> yeah. We're Asian and we're coming for you. <laughs> as far as like advice for, for Asian guys, I go is just like, you need to like frame yourself in the mindset that black people are just like Asians in general. I feel like Asians, the Asians that I know, majority of Asians hang out with other Asians. Right. Mm -hmm. That's, just, that's yeah. just the fact. And then I, like, personally, black people usually hang out with black people. Like, mm -hmm. that's, like, a similarity. So, like, if you're at, like, a, like a social environment, like, just for example, if, you know, I'm, I know you go to clubs and, like, mm -hmm. teach, like, camps there. 
So like if you're at a club, I don't think he's bringing you to like a black ratchet, like, you know, booty club, <laughs> All you know. Black <laughs> so it's like if, if he's bringing you to just like a normal like club where they're playing like EDM and whatnot, um, and you see a group of black girls there, that means they're willing to go there because they're tired of black guys. Like, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like if they're, if they're already, like if you know, like it's like saying like a bunch of Asians could go to an Asian club, but they chose to go to like a regular club. Mm -hmm. like, right. They may be with their group of friends, but yeah. same with black people. So it's like, if you just get yourself in that mindset, like, oh, there's like black girls here. Mm -hmm. They're here for a reason. Just go up and talk to them. A word of advice is it's easier to go up to like fat black girls. <laughs> like, you know, like it's true. Like I'm not gonna, not gonna lie. First thing when you walk into a club, big girls in general are usually getting down. <laughs> like that's just how it is. Cause they don't care. So they have like, some base. This is called the big boned theory. <laughs> yeah, if you walk into a club and you see a group of like two or more like big people, black people, um, if you just go up to them, I guarantee you, I'll give you a hundred dollars. <laughs> like, just go, go and like go, go do some shit like you know on them, and like they'll be really receptive to it, you know, because yeah. big girls need love too. I just wanted to add one more thing, mm -hmm. like for um, just for like Asian guys, it just came to me. I know like Asian guys in general, like you know, we're raised by like our tiger moms or whatever, mm. <laughs> and you know, we're we're. We're grown up, we're growing up to like, you know, there's like this bamboo ceiling, you know, you gotta be a doctor or whatever. Engineer, lawyer. Yeah, doctor, yeah. engineer, lawyer. And it's like, you're raised in a very like, oh, you need to dress this way. You need to wear Louis, like brands, mm -hmm. you know, you can't dress like- Asians are such brand whores. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh my God. So, so essentially like growing up in that, you're in that mindset of like high class already because Asian mm -hmm. parents want you in that high class. And I feel like a lot of Asian people in general like lose sight of what it means to like to struggle like they don't see like their parents struggle mm -hmm. of like coming to America if you want like a different mindset for someone to get you out of your shell like you know if you're tired of going to KTV every night and you're like is there more to life than just hanging out with other Asian girls and just doing the same shit over and over explore other races you know like meet different people mm -hmm. that's how you're gonna you know, hear other people's story and stuff and like stop hanging out with people that look exactly like you and think the same way that you do mm -hmm. and that's how you're going to expand your mind. Right. And the thing is, like like I said, I have had students that were absolutely shocked. They mm -hmm. thought I was going to, like sending them to the wolves when I sent them in to talk <laughs> to a beautiful black girl. And more times than not, even more times than say talking to a Latin girl or a white girl, the black girl was more receptive to mm -hmm. him. And it just blew his mind. And I've had students that have dated and even married black women. Right. Like I said, mm -hmm. I've dated black women too. And, you know, attractive women, quality women are there regardless of race. You mm -hmm. have to be open to it. Mm -hmm. Just like you guys sort of met each other in high school, but you didn't date. The only way to defeat stereotypes is to show people of, of different racial backgrounds connecting intimately mm -hmm. and showing that we can be in love, we can be best friends. So you guys... Go out there, find yourself a beautiful woman regardless of race and just be, you know, keep an open mind that she could be white, black, yellow, purple, whatever, okay? Mm -hmm. um, now, how can our audience find more about, like what's your YouTube channel? Our YouTube channel and Instagram is Blasian Quest. So it's pretty self-explanatory, black and Asian. <laughs> but we're on a quest. Just to share our journey, you know, yeah. through comedy, through us doing sketches and having fun and just being ourselves and really, you know, sharing that with other people. And I feel like people see that, you know, that we're a couple and that we're genuine, you know, it's not. Real. Yeah, they see the realness to it and they're like, wow, I, you know, I look up to you. And to me, that's like really cool, you know, that people look up to us because of what we're doing, because we're just together, you know, and we're just out being us, and that's really cool. All right, be sure to check out the description, the links to their awesome YouTube channel is also gonna be there. Thank you so much, guys. Absolutely, thank you, thank you for having us, JT. Be sure to subscribe, bye-bye. Hey there, thanks for watching our video. I hope you liked it, and make sure you guys subscribe to this channel and watch all our other videos. Great news too, every Monday we'll be putting out a new weekly video. That's right, we've got educational seminars, street interviews, uh, fun infield pickup videos, and anything else we can come up with that's fun for you guys to watch. So check back for that every Monday. Oh, and if that's not enough for you, remember that for the last 10 years, the ABCs of Attraction have been the finishing school for Asian gentlemen. So we've been teaching guys how to be better boyfriends, more confident, and better husbands. If you need that extra push, you can enroll in one of our classes. But until then, we'll see you every Monday.
Bye.